what it is what it do i'm a one this is destiny and in this video i'm going to be showing you all the fastest way to get an exotic sword now in order to use the method that i'm going to show in this video you're going to have to have already gotten at least one exotic sword on one of your characters as you can see here i've already gotten the exotic sword known as the raised lighter on my hunter so i'm going to be using my hunter to level up my second sword and the sword we're going to be using as an example is this Void Edge Legendary Sword that I got on my Warlock. Obviously, after you turn in the 25 Hadium Flakes and the Motes of Light to Lord Shax, he's going to offer you a Legendary Sword. One Solar, one is Arc, and one is Void. Again, I've already done all of the quests that you have to do for the Solar Exotic Sword on my Hunter. I also turned in the 25 Hadium Flakes and the Motes of Light for the Legendary Void Sword on my Warlock. And as soon as I got my Legendary Void Sword on my Warlock, I ended up putting it in the Vault and then I took it out of the Vault on my Hunter. The very next thing you want to do is to infuse weapons into that new sword that you just got. And you're going to have to keep infusing weapons until you get the attack all the way up to at least 280. Another thing you're going to have to do is to unlock all of the perks that came with that new legendary sword. Obviously, the best and fastest way to unlock all of the perks is to equip that sword and then use Motes of Light, which is what I'm going to be doing right here. Now, once you've gotten the attack to at least 280, and once you've unlocked all of the sword's perks, and you also purchased those perks, then you're going to want to go see Lord Shax at the tower. Now, as you can see right here, I went to go see Lord Shax. He didn't have any quests for me. And that was because I didn't purchase the last perk for the legendary sword. As soon as you purchase that last perk and then go see Lord Shax, he will offer you a new quest. Now, as you can see right here, the quest that he offers you is the quest where you have to gather 10 materials and you'll also have to attune your light, which means that you'll have to get a bunch of kills using your abilities, whether it's the melee ability, grenade ability, or your super ability. You're going to have to get a lot of kills using a subclass that does the same elemental damage as the sword you're trying to get. So in this example, we're doing a void sword. So you're going to have to get a bunch of kills using a void subclass, as well as gathering 10 rare materials in order to complete this quest. Now, if you've done everything I just mentioned, then that means that you have successfully skipped at least two of the quests that you normally have to do in order to get the exotic sword. The first quest that you skipped is the Honing the Edge quest, where you have to kill 25 guardians with the sword, and you also have to kill 50 majors using your sword. And again, this is the very first quest that we skipped. So you won't have to do this quest if you switched your sword over to a character that's already done the exotic sword quest. And the other quest that you skipped is the one called Blade of Night, which is the quest where you have to draw out and defeat Ekthar, Sword of Oryx, in the Asylum on the Dreadnought. Again, if I had kept my Void Legendary Sword on my Warlock, I would have had to have done both of these quests before getting to the quest where you have to get 10 rare materials and attune your light by getting a bunch of kills using your abilities. So by skipping both of these quests, you're going to be saving yourself at least a couple hours, which is why I say this is by far the fastest method for getting an exotic sword, because you're going to be skipping these two quests and going straight to the quest where you have to get rare materials and ability kills. Now when it comes to getting the rare materials, you're going to have to get the Relic Crystal for the Void Legendary Sword, and you get that Relic Crystal by collecting Relic Shards on Mars. Just keep in mind that you're not going to get the Relic Crystal every time you collect the Relic Shard. I'd say on average you probably get one Relic Crystal for every 15 to 20 Relic Shards that you collect. When it comes to the Arc Legendary Sword, you're going to have to collect 10 Zeptosite cores, which can be found by collecting Spin Metal on Earth. Again, you're not going to get these cores every single time you collect Spin Metal. In my personal experience, you get about one core for every 15 to 20 Spin Metals that you collect. And for the Solar Exotic Sword, you're going to have to collect 10 Solaton Flares on the Moon by collecting Helium Filaments. And just like with the other rare materials, you'll probably get at least one soliton flare out of every 15 to 20 helium filaments that you collect. Now there is a couple things you can do to make this process go by a lot faster. If you're playing as a Night Stalker Hunter, you can use the Keen Scout perk, which makes it a lot easier to find those materials no matter what planet you're on. 
Another way to find these materials quickly is to use a weapon that has the Relentless Tracker perk. And basically what this perk does is every time you get a kill with this weapon, it'll give you enhanced motion tracker resolution for a short time. So basically this Relentless Tracker perk is sort of a mini Keen Scout perk. Again, all you have to do is equip that weapon, make sure that perk is unlocked on that weapon, get a kill with it, and after you've gotten that kill for a short amount of time, you should be able to see some of these materials pop up on your mini map, as you can see right here. But again, that relentless tracker only lasts for a short amount of time every time you get a kill. So I wouldn't necessarily consider it the best method to use if you're trying to find these rare materials. Now when it comes to the best method in my opinion to find those rare materials, you're going to want to equip a ghost that detects and marks nearby materials that you're looking for. So if you're looking to collect relic iron, you're going to want to equip a ghost that detects and marks nearby relic iron formations. If you need to collect spin metal for those zeptocyte core rare materials, then you're going to want to equip a ghost shell that detects spin metal. And obviously you're going to want to do the same thing for helium. And basically what these ghosts do is every time you get near one of the materials that you're looking for, you'll see a little icon pop up on your screen that looks like a target, which obviously makes it a lot easier to find your materials. And another thing that I should mention is that you're not going to be able to find any of those rare materials in chests. The only way that you can get these rare materials is by collecting the material itself, whether it be spin metal, relic iron, or helium. You're going to have to collect those materials in order to get the rare materials that you need. Because again, you're not going to be able to get those rare materials from any of the chests. Anyways, like I mentioned earlier, not only are you going to have to get those 10 rare materials, but you're also going to have to get a bunch of kills using your abilities. So again, if you're trying to get the Void Exotic Sword, like we're trying to do in this example, you're going to have to get a bunch of kills using your Void abilities, whether it's a Void Super ability, Void Grenade, or Void Melee ability. Now, I heard that the void ability kills part of this quest is taking people a lot of time to complete but I'm gonna tell you right now the easiest and fastest way to complete this portion of the quest is to go play mayhem clash and the reason I recommend that you play mayhem clash is because not only will you get your super ability faster than normal but you'll also get your grenade and melee abilities faster than normal and you should be able to get kills using those grenade, melee, and super abilities a lot more often when you're playing in Mayhem Clash. Obviously, some subclasses are going to be a lot better than others. When I was playing with the Striker Titan trying to get my Arc Sword, I was able to get around 10 to 15% of my ability kills every time I played one Mayhem Clash match. But when I was playing as a Night Stalker, I was only getting somewhere between 7 and 10% of my ability kills. But either way, it definitely seemed like it was faster to complete this portion of the quest when I was playing in Mayhem Clash as compared to other PvP game modes and compared to PvE game modes as well. So while you're trying to gather your rare materials, you're going to want to select a subclass that will also help you get your ability kills. And as soon as you find all 10 of your materials, you're going to want to go to Mayhem Clash and try to get the rest of your ability kills in Mayhem Clash. And again, the main reason you want to do Mayhem is because all of your abilities recharge much faster, which allows you to get kills more often using your grenade, melee, and super abilities. Now, once you've completed this quest where you have to gather 10 rare materials and also get ability kills, once you've completed that quest, you'll have to go back to the tower and see Lord Shax. And the next quest that he's going to give you is the quest where you have to wait till Arms Day, which is every Wednesday. And on that next arms day, you're going to have to go see Lord Shax again. So after you gather your rare materials and gotten your ability kills, you want to go see Lord Shax and get the quest where you have to wait till the next arms day. Now, once the next arms day has come around, you want to go see Lord Shax again, and he's going to give you a new quest called Sealing the Blade. And this Sealing the Blade quest is the last quest that you're going to have to do before you get your new exotic sword. And for this last quest, you have to do the Sunless Cell Strike, but it's not gonna be your normal Sunless Cell Strike that you see in the Heroic playlist. It's going to be a new version of the Sunless Cell Strike, and you'll see the icon in Destinations on the Dreadnought. So again, you're not gonna wanna try to complete this part of the quest by going to the Heroic playlist. Instead, you're going to go to the 
sunless cell strike destination that's going to be located on the dreadnought. Again, when you're in orbit and you click on destinations, you'll see the Taken King purple icon above the strike that you have to complete for this quest. Anyways, with this sunless cell strike, not only are you going to have to kill the final boss, but you're also going to have to kill the three wardens that appear as well. But you can't kill them as soon as you see them. Instead, what you're going to want to do is take down their health. You want to try to lower their health as much as you can. And as soon as you have their health as low as you can make it without killing them, you want to go ahead and have everybody focus on trying to get the boss's health as low as possible. You want to try to get his health to at least 1 or 2%. Now, as soon as you have the final boss's health down to around 1 or 2%, you want to go ahead and have everybody kill all three of the wardens and as soon as you all kill all three wardens you want to try to kill the final boss within 30 seconds but again if you already had his health down to about one or two percent this part should be rather easy i would say the hardest part of this quest is trying to keep the wardens alive and staying alive because there are a bunch of ads that spawn in as well so again first thing you want to do is to get all three wardens health down as low as you can and as soon as their health is low you want to go ahead and try to get the final boss's health down to about one or two percent and as soon as his health gets down that low you want to go ahead and have everybody take out all three wardens and as soon as you all take out all three wardens you want everybody to go ahead and finish off the final boss and if you've done it correctly you will have successfully completed the last part of your exotic sword quest so all you'll have to do from there is just go back to the tower go see lord shax and collect your new exotic sword Anyways, it pretty much sums up the fastest method for getting an exotic sword. Like I mentioned earlier, you do have to have at least one character that's gotten the exotic sword before you can do this method. But if you do already have at least one exotic sword, then I would strongly recommend that you use this method because it allows you to skip a couple of the quests that you would normally have to do, which will obviously end up saving you time. And even if you don't have one exotic sword yet, you can still use a couple of the other methods that I've shown here, whether it be equipping a ghost, that detects and marks nearby materials or playing mayhem clash to get your ability kills because both of those strategies will save you time and help you complete those quests faster anyways that'll do it for this video if you enjoyed it or found it useful don't forget to do what you do i'm a1 thanks for watching